Hello, everybody. It's Stephen and Walter here for today's episode of So Chatty, episode 52. And this is March the 25th, 2022. And before I forget to tell you this, next week there probably will not be a So Chatty uh, session because we'll be away on a retreat. And we're going to talk about that today, actually. We're going to talk a lot about retreat today. So next Friday, which I believe will be April the 1st. Yeah, April Fool's Day. And this is not an April Fool's joke. I know you jump on April Fool's. You just love it. Your mother used to be such an April Fooler. She did all kinds of things to you as a kid. Mm. My mother did it once every blue moon, maybe. Whatever, but I digress. So, yeah. So next week, April the 1st, Friday, April the 1st, there probably will not be a so chatty for that week. It's okay. We'll make up for it the week after. All right, so just before we jump into today's topic about the retreat we're going to, um, I have a follow-up on Ugly Fabric. And Cheryl Hogan, one of our viewers, sent me a, a, a scrap of fabric or a picture of a scrap of fabric that she's had, in, I think, in her stash a long time because she bought it and doesn't know why she did. So she thinks this is an example of Ugly Fabric. And I'll show it to you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't buy it myself. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, it's 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 a novelty fabric, right? Um, you might be able to use it in something, but it would be something very specialized. An ugly shirt. Yeah, an ugly <laughs> shirt. Um, there's something almost you know comical about it to a certain extent. Um. But well, only fat ladies. Well, I guess. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um, it's well, the colors in it are kind of. Yeah, the colors weird. are bad. And um, I don't know the depiction of the women on there. Is particularly. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. What do you call it? Complimentary. No, not really. They all look like a big bunch of fat old biddies. <laughs> I don't know. But. Maybe in a small piece. Well, she did use it, and she sent a picture of what she did with it. And that's not the picture. That's the picture. Okay, so she did a fussy cut and used it in the center of a, a log cabin. I think it's a log cabin. No, it's not a log cabin block. You know, I think she said it was. Well, I have her note here. What she said. This is what she said. This is the ugly fabric I mentioned in my comment about ugly fabric. It was so ugly, my friends and I bought it to share and sneak into our quilts. I put one of the faces in my Avatrex quilt. The fabric was a name and a designer listed on the salvage. The designer needs to find another line of work. Obviously, design fabric is not their calling. So they actually purposely bought it because it was ugly, by the wow. sounds of things. And it became a bit of a challenge. So... Now, you see, in a small piece, like what we were talking about last week with ugly fabric, if you use it as a small piece somewhere, it kind of gets lost. Its ugliness gets lost in the rest of the quilt. And I think that's what uh, Cheryl has done uh, here as well. Um, yeah, I don't know who the designer is. She didn't say, and, well, not nice to say their name either, because maybe this is somebody who hasn't designed fabric a lot, or maybe there are people who think or this maybe, is really neat. Maybe it's a piece of a line of fabric that they had that was, um, I don't know. I don't, it's uh, part of a panel or something. I, yeah. I, I don't know. She doesn't really say, it was so ugly, my friends and I bought it to share. It was. She didn't say whether or not this was yardage or whether it was like, you know, in a, clearance bin with remnants or something or maybe like it was a cartoonish type uh yeah series of fabrics or something that uh was it it just may, maybe it was making fun of of i don't know i don't know <laughs> we're trying to justify ugly fabric here yeah well i don't know sometimes they produce fabric and um it's not to everybody's tastes. Everybody has their sees the, their own point of view with it, like you know. Yeah, but well, I don't know how many people would, would, would be uh, like this. It wouldn't have grabbed me. But having said that, I could see this as a bag. Yeah, I suppose. Maybe. Yeah, 
because it would make it sort of comical would definitely be different would stand out from a lot of other bags so you know even ugly fabric does have you can use it as we said last week but anyways i thought this was yeah this one kind of it's not one i would gravitate towards for sure Okay, so that takes us to an update about our costumes. And we want to talk today, if I get my camera switched around here, there we are, um, about the retreat. We're about to, well, this time next week, we'll be at the retreat. And we're going to talk about it. And we're going to talk about how we're getting ready for it and how what, what we're taking. And we take a lot of crap uh with us but also to explain why we take a lot of stuff and and the whole bit um because i think for a lot of people who have never been to a physical retreat this is a physical retreat um they maybe don't know what to expect and i know um the first time i ever went to a retreat i figured i could take whatever i could get into my sewing bag and that was enough and i soon quickly found out that no i needed some other things that i hadn't thought of before and looking around at the other ladies who were experienced at going to retreats well you got a very good sense of you know the kind of things you probably should bring some of the things when people told me they were bringing them made me laugh i'm like oh you got to be kidding but we'll talk about those in a moment but first of all you know that well this retreat is the first retreat that we've been to and since before COVID. physical retreat. physical retreat been on ones on zoom and things like that um and i have to say i enjoy the zoom retreats um do i enjoy them as much as the physical retreat yes and no i mean the one advantage and we've said this in when we talked about retreats on another episode back a couple of months ago um, one of the things we said, the advantage of a Zoom retreat is you have everything. You don't get yeah, right at your fingertips. You don't have to worry that, oh, I forgot that at home kind of a thing or whatever. And you don't have to lug it all over the place. And when we start talking about the stuff we're taking, you'll know that we really need a transport truck to get it there. We don't have one, but we need one. Um, but uh, this retreat, we are also part of... The show as well and if you've been watching Stephen and walter live and that regularly you've heard us talk about this we volunteered back i guess it was the last retreat that they had um a couple of years ago or we do it two years in a row we may have done it two yeah. years when we were the entertainment oh well, the first time we went to actually we weren't really officially entertainment the first time no. we did it First time we did it, we went to uh, we went to a Halloween party in the uh, fall, and we got kind of dressed up uh, in costumes. And uh, I said uh, when we were uh, at the retreat, I said to Steve, "Why don't we uh, bring our costumes with us, and just as a joke, show up, um, you know, like on a Saturday night or something like that, wearing these costumes, right?" And uh, uh, and uh and so every it was a hit everybody yeah. it was a, a nice diversion from 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 sewing all weekend so because when you go to a retreat you sew you yeah. sew and sew and sew and sew and sew and like first thing in the morning you're up you they're sewing some people would be in the hall where they were the the place we're going to is a christian bible camp kind of a thing but they rent out their their chapel basically which is more like a big auditorium hall uh, to groups for events like this and so um before you had, meals were provided and they were in a different location in this area and you have accommodation as well you have it's, it's like being in a motel kind of a thing except they have they have motel a small motel like setting for rooms that's what we stayed in but there was other ones that were kind of like a house with a sort of like I don't know how those were set up because I was never inside one, but, you know, rooms and those and things like that. Um, this place has trailer areas in it, too, that people leave their trailers up there all year round kind of a deal. Um, I don't think many people go up and use their trailers in the winter because it doesn't look like it's dug out in the winter wintertime. Um, but in the summer, I think it's very, very popular. Um, and uh, so, you know, some people before we had brekkie in the morning, They'd be up at six o'clock in sewing. Uh, they'd be sewing 
late into the night uh, because you could, it was open 24 seven kind of a thing. Um, some of them were sewing at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, some of these ladies were there for a good time, a party, and that included as much sewing as they could possibly get done. Um, so yeah, this kind of thing we did was more or less a, a, a diversion uh, from what was going on. I was trying to look here. I don't know if I can find some. No, I can't find the pictures. I put them on another drive and yeah, it take me for a while to find it. I was going to show you our costumes from last year or the last time we did it. But anyways, that year we had costumes. We dressed up as a, as the Quilting Sisters, uh, Matilda Mudslinger and Gladass Happy Mum. And yeah. and, we, uh, and the previous two times we went, we just purchased uh, um, outfits from online stores and that. But this year we decided to make them. Yeah. And uh, but this because the second time we did that, we were more of, officially more part of the programming of activities for it. Um, so we had uh, and we're going to have it this year too a challenge booklet. The challenge booklet consists of some word search, crossword, guess the block, fill in the blank, little quickie games. Again, the idea of this is everybody gets one of these little booklets. Um, and when you finish one of the puzzles or if you finish the whole book, you get so many tickets. And these tickets are going to be used later for the auction. I'll tell you how that works uh, in a bit. So you earn these tickets. Now... I don't check the answers or anything like that um, because it's just for fun and people don't have to do it if they don't want to or they can do one or two of the puzzles and get some tickets. It's all up to them. But it's a way of clearing your mind out, uh, going to a different area rather than concentrating on the quilting. Because you know what it's like. If you don't do that, clear your mind if, when you've been quilting for hours on end, you start to make a lot of mistakes. You need to have a break. Uh, from that kind of thing. So that was one reason why I designed that. And also it was just kind of fun. And people get competitive. A little bit competitive. Friendly competitive with it. Um, but quite frankly, everybody wins. <laughs> gets tickets on this one uh, kind of a deal. It's kind of like being in kindergarten. where Everybody gets a ribbon. You know, <laughs> for whatever. Um, so we did that and... We had some um, quickie, I call it a scavenger hunt, but it's not really a scavenger hunt. I would call out at certain parts just in the middle of the day or something, hey, who can show me a, a bobbin wound with pink thread? And the first one that did, they got a prize kind of thing or more tickets and, and for the auction, that kind of thing. Um, and then we had uh, the entertainment that night. The entertainment that night was Walter and I dressed up as, we went as a couple of waitresses. We had these lovely dresses that, well, as Walter said, we bought online um, that looked sort of 50s style. And uh, we had wigs and everything. And, you know, they're pretty hideous costumes <laughs> in a way, but they're just for fun. Well, the crowd went wild. And everybody wanted to get their picture taken with the girls. And so we did that. And in fact, I had taken my selfie printer. This is a little tiny printer that works wirelessly with your camera and it'll print your pictures out on glossy paper. It's kind of a pricey little item when you start figuring out what it costs per picture and that. But I took it up figuring that, okay, if you wanted your picture taken with the girls, then we take your picture using my cell phone and then I just send it to the printer and you get a copy of it. But the owner of the store decided at the last minute, and I, I'll be very honest, and she knows this too, I was not very happy with this idea. It was a good idea, but why I wasn't happy was it was sprung on me at the last moment. She decided if people wanted a, a picture, this picture I was printing out, I was printing it out for nothing. Um. She was going to charge $5 and the $5 was going to be donated to the food bank for charity. Well, okay. Good method to make some money, charitable organization and all that kind of stuff. I don't have a problem with that, but I would have liked to have known in, in beforehand because basically this was not her place to do that as far as I was concerned. I should have been consulted first. That was suddenly sprung on me with no consultation. And I was supplying 
the materials for it. So, um, so I've changed that idea this year uh, as well. But I'll I'll speak to that too a little bit more uh, later. But anyways, they all were just in for all of that. They they loved it. It was fun. So um, we did a bingo game, which was a disaster. <laughs> I had created with a program on um, the internet. You can go and, and it'll create. You don't have to put in numbers. You can put in like words. So I put in all kinds of quilting words. And then it generates uh, bingo cards with all those words, but, you know, all jumbled up on different cards. And you can buy the cards and print them out. They come to you as a PDF file. And you can buy... 10 50 100 i think i bought 100 or something wasn't that expensive printed them all out took them up there thought we'd never get through that bingo game oh that took forever um and i don't know why it took that long so this year we're not doing bingo we decided because it was just ridiculously too long uh, people were lo really losing interest on that so we learned from that and uh we have this auction. Now, what happens is Donna, the hostess with the most, is from Ultimate Sewing. She has uh, goes to the suppliers for the store, and they donate all kinds of things as prizes. So, you know, you get, like, um, charm packs and different notions and patterns and things like that. They uh, Actually, a pretty good variety of stuff. Um, so what we decided to do was we organized them into... Uh, auction lots and there was enough auction lots that everybody would win one auction and the way you did the auction was we laid them all out on a table uh, so everybody could see what items were up for auction and there was a bag with a number matching the lot uh, on it and everybody had earned these tickets over the course of the weekend, like for doing the booklet, so many tickets uh, for some of these scavenger hunt things. There were tickets and other things. So there's opportunities to earn more tickets. And I think I gave everybody a starter strip of tickets as well of 10 or something when they uh, when we first started the retreat. So they accumulate these tickets and then. They look around at what the things are and the things they want to bid on they put the tickets in the bag now they can put one ticket in each bag they can put two in this bag four in this bag five in this bag whatever until they're out of tickets so the idea is if there's something there you really really want it's like a silent auction you put in as many tickets as you want get you know increasing your odds of winning it but the thing is everybody gets a prize and you can only win one auction and once you your auction item if you've won something then you're out of the rest of the auction it's just a way to make it fair so that one person you know there's always that person in the crowd the lucky one who wins at everything so it just makes it more equally um spaced out you know amongst everybody gets something distributed distributed that's the word i was looking for yes you jump right in here with that words okay you do that you just keep me on the straight and narrow with those words. Please do. Please do. So anyways, that's how things worked last year. And it went along, or the last time we did it, a couple of years ago. Um, so again, we got asked if we would do something like this again. And we said, sure. But this time, based on our experiences, we've gotten a little bit more. I think it's going to be a little bit more interesting. So what are we doing? Okay. They're still going to do the challenge booklet. Now, anybody who's watching this that goes to the retreat, I shouldn't tell you this, but it's the same booklet as two years ago, and let's hope you didn't save yours. Because I did. People wanted copies of the, the puzzles with the answers, and so I, I thought they might. So I had printed an uh, extra set of booklets with the answers, and I've done the same thing this year. So they will get uh, a final copy of it took a while to print it because I made 50 copies of this sucker. Um, yeah, went through a lot of ink on that on my printer. So we'll do that. Um, I made, and you've seen them, all these little uh, pin cushions that look like thimbles turned upside down. And I've got colored pins in them. And that's a freebie. Everybody gets one of those. So when they first get in and get set up for the retreat, they're going to get the booklet. Uh a strip of about 10 tickets for the auction and they're going to get one of these pin cushions as well um 
And those took a while to make, but I like making things on a 3D printer. You know that. So that was okay. That was fine. Um, so that's what they get started off with. Then during the course of the next three days, there will be the spot scavenger kind of thing. So I have a whole list of different things I'm going to be calling out. And, you know, I might call out something like who's got um, a red handled seam ripper. First person to show me that they'll get a prize. Now, we're still not sure how many prizes we've got. I made some extra ones, but Donna told me a few weeks ago she was having a little trouble getting things uh, from the suppliers this time around. Um, she didn't know why, because usually they'd been very, very generous in the past. Um, but she was working on that. So I'm sure she will have at least enough for the auction. But anything above that, those will be prizes that we'll pull throughout the the weekend or the days. And um, so again, the idea is lots of prizes. It gets people excited. Um, and I usually play some kind of sound effect or something so they know about that draw prize. And they all go, ooh, ooh, and boy, do they get competitive, some of them. I'm hoping the things I've asked for this time, there's not a whole lot of people will have the same one uh, to get up there because they just grab and run <laughs> to get this. You'd think there was money on involved. But anyways, but it's fun. So we'll be doing that. Now, something new that I've put in, and I hope this works. We're going to do a scrap block challenge for those that want to partake in it now some people don't want to partake in some of these things because they're there they're what i call the really serious sewers they're there making every second count i'm going to get 12 projects done before i leave this place uh kind of a deal and that's fine that's what they want to do that's fine um but for the others that uh, like to do these things there's they get a paper bag in the paper bag and the paper bag is sealed we made them all up yesterday. I'm sick and tired of making them. And took scrap pieces of fabric. All kinds. And just, I put them in great big plastic boxes, first of all. So I was sorting through them and I tossed them like a salad. A lot. So there was lots of variety. And I just went in with a handful and put them in the bag. Actually, I think I put two handfuls in every bag. Now, are the bags equally distributed with color and in number of pieces? Uh-uh. You get what you get. And that's the challenge. And the challenge is for them to use those scraps to create either a 6, 8, or 10-inch block. Their design. They don't have to use all their scraps, but they may not trade their scraps with other people. Now, there will be cheaters. <laughs> and I will address that. Um, because I would... I would cheat. So, you know, it's, there's rules, but you know what I'm saying? There really isn't any rules with it. And um, when they get their block done and they have to have it done by a specific time, I think I put it on uh, at noon, just before we go to lunch on um, the Saturday. And uh, I'm going to, my idea is I'm going to pin them up on the wall or they have these, uh, dividers you know that in the hall already that are covered in cloth and that and i've got some pins i'll just pin them to that and underneath each one i'm going to pin a paper bag with a number i'll match up numbers with the the block too i i've got different ways of doing this depending on what the setup is like in there but it, essentially they uh, are given they will be given so uh, five or ten tickets of a different color than from the other ones they've been earning all weekend and they will vote on the blocks they like the best now the voting will work the same way as as what i was talking about with the the auction they can distribute their 10 tickets any way they wish if there's one block on there they really really like and they want it to win they can take all 10 of their tickets and drop them in the bag or they can put two in this bag and maybe four in that bag or whatever and when i close the voting which i think i've set the time for three o'clock saturday afternoon no more voting We'll take the bags down. We'll count up the tickets in each bag, and that's how we'll figure out who the winners are. And I think we can have, I have trophies that I made, again, on the 3D printer, um, that say, you know, Ultimate Sewing Retreat 2022 on the bottom of it. Um, and they're pin cushions. I made them into pin cushions as well. You know me and pin cushions. I love pin cushions for some reason. Um, I like making them anyways. 
So that's the prize for the best blocks. So I'm hoping I have a first, second, and third. Now, if I get a tie, I have a fourth trophy. Now, the only thing that could put a snag into this, but because we're counting up the tickets, we can alter things if we need to, is I, I am going to allow them to work in partnership. If they want to work with somebody else, which means they will have two bags to work from. I had thought of limiting the one, but figured no uh, with that. But we'll make it work. It'll work. Out. So that should be kind of fun. And uh, they can embellish their blocks any way they wish. They'd want to do some thread painting or whatever. They don't have to be sandwiched and quilted. But if they want it, if they want to, they can. So it's all up to them. So I think that'll be kind of fun and creative. Uh, and, you know, quilters are competitive <laughs> to a, yeah, in a friendly way, usually. So we got that. Then the Saturday night, we've got uh, a couple of games. I'm taking my computer and I'm taking a projector and I'm taking speakers so that they have a big screen there. And I've already asked Donna to put in a request that we can use their equipment because they have a big control panel at the back that I'm pretty sure my computer or they have a computer and I can just plug into that and use the projector they have in the ceiling in their big screen, which would be ideal and their sound system as well. But if not, I have a backup system uh, for that. If that isn't going to work out. So we'll have that. Uh, we have us in our costumes as well. Um, pictures will be taken, but we're not going to print them out this time. They just use their own camera. You want a picture with the girls? Um, use your own camera kind of a thing. Uh, and that I think will, because that was a bit of a, an organizational nightmare, uh, when you're in costume and everything, trying to get all that stuff sorted out. We will have the auction. We're going to play a couple of quickie games, trivia games, uh, which I'll have a big screen, like a name that tune kind of a thing. And uh, this will run for about an hour, maybe. Um, and uh, then we'll also, at that time, we'll also reveal who the winners were of the scrap block challenge. And we have the auction and get that set up. Now, here's what we made a mistake on about the auction. It went on too long. The first time we did it, they had all these tickets. The tickets had numbers on them. And they needed to rip the ticket in half because there was a number on either end and put one half of their ticket in the bags for the auction. So then I reached into the bag and we pulled it out and we called the number. Now, they were like six-digit numbers, okay? Oh, my God. I was ready to kill. There were people who couldn't read their number for one reason or another, couldn't find their ticket for this or that. Or you'd call it out and you'd be standing there. Okay, number is, what was the last number? What were the last three? Like it was, oh, so painful, wasn't it? Yeah. It was horrible. It, and it was, I mean, okay, come on. This was like kindergarten kids could have done this better. I was ready to kill. I really was at that point. And then, of course, what would happen is, Somebody would have already won a prize, and I said only one prize to a person. But then they'd come up with their ticket again and try to get the another prize, and we didn't know whether, like, we they'd heard the number wrong or something. It was just a nightmare. So, different. We're still using the tickets, but instead of using the numbers on the tickets, I'm going to have them all, before we even open up the auction, they will write their name on the back of each ticket then the tickets go in the bags and then when i reach in i pull up and patty jones you've won this auction for this uh auction lot and then somebody will have probably donna just record that you know auction lot number one patty johnson i pull out the next one different name but if I pull Patty Johnson at any time again, I'll go, no, we've already got her next name. So they, I'm hoping they will remember their own names. Like when I call out their names, I'm hoping. But you know what I'll get? I know I'll get this. Who? Who? Who's that? Patty who? Ratty what? Jinxton? <laughs> uh, it will be that way. 
Well, but... you got a whole hall full of old ladies, so. <laughs> Oh, you gotta make sure to turn their hearing aids up. Yeah, that's this is when Matilda Mudslinger gets just a little bit goes teacher on him. Okay, my eyes are here. Your ears are here. Your mouths are closed. Listen with these. Watch with these. <laughs> and it'll still be who knows. But anyways, it's still all in good fun. So it'll work out. It will work out. But it should be a hoot because everybody loves winning prizes, right? So that's what we are. We're the entertainment, I guess. So I thought we talk about now we're talking about packing for retreat. Now, I pack differently than Walter does because I make a list and I have my list and I'm checking it twice. How do you pack? I just sort of think what I throw, throw together. <laughs> yeah, at the last minute and then you forget something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, my list is very long, and, uh, well, <laughs> you're going to wonder about some of the things on the list. Okay, first of all, basics. When we went to one of our first retreats with Holiman Sewing, we had both just gotten into machine embroidery. I took my sewing machine, but and I took, well, we both took two machines. Walter took his 550E embroidery, right? And, and then your Janome 6700. I took my Janome 15000, which has an embroidery machine built into it. And because I had planned to do some machine embroidery, but I also wanted to do some sewing, I took my travel sewing machine of the, at the time. So we had four sewing machines we were taking. Then, irons, okay? Now, did we take one or two irons? We took two. You we had took... the small one, and then I had my Panasonic. Oh, you had your Panasonic. So we had two irons, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, peop... there are irons sort of supplied if you want, but it's always a good idea to take your own iron with you as well because... Oh. What was that? I don't know. Oh, I think it was my iPad. Just mm -hmm. kind of... That's a new sound. Mm -hmm. Hadn't heard that one before. It came through the speaker system, so... Oh. I wonder what that, well, that wasn't my iPad then. Huh, Who knows, okay. Yeah. Who knows? Anyways. So when you get to a retreat and if you don't take your own iron with you, you're going to be standing in line to use the iron. And there is always one person, one person who did one and a half inch half square triangles and made 3000 of them and is pressing each one and is on there all day. And does not move. So take your own bloody iron. Okay. And pressing mat. And pressing mat. And this brings up another thing. That at one time. The very first one that we went to. I hadn't thought of taking. But was a really good idea. And we take them now. Collapsible table. A small one. You know the ones that are about two feet by. Or maybe three feet by two feet wide just very small ones great thing to have because you never have enough table space i mean at this retreat we have six foot tables set up or more depending on the number of people there so there's usually lots of room but i still find that it's really good it's good for setting up for example a pressing area or a cutting area so taking a and we've got these ones we bought at crappy tire uh some time ago and uh, we take the two of those. We have two of those, don't we? Crappy tires, Canadian tire. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for for those of you that aren't Canadian. That's what we call crappy tires, Canadian tire. It's a department store of sorts. Um, do you have any little tables upstairs? No, you don't, do you? So it's just the ones I had down here. So there should be two. Yeah, there are two. Yeah. Technically, there's a third one that sits over. The, that's uh, I don't know if we'll take it. We only took the two before, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so, yeah. It's been a while. I had to think about it. But really handy to have. Um, the other thing you want to take is cutting mat. Okay. Um, whether it's one of those ones that folds up, or uh, that's usually what I take, or a regular cutting mat, like a, well, as big as you can transport kind of a thing, given on your spacing, too, where you're going to put it. Because there's always going to be somebody who's doing nothing but the whole retreat cutting on the one that's supplied by the retreat people if they supply one they usually do so yeah you know 
There's nothing more annoying than spending half your retreat time standing in line. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to involve you more. It's become okay, a Stephen okay. show. Yeah, it's Stephen show. Well, don't look so enthused. Mm -hmm. Wow, Whoopi, you can jump in here at any time. Well, you are going to jump in here in a moment because I got something I'm going to ask you because there are some things that are a little different this time mm -hmm. than the uh, one we went to before. Okay, so those are things that you need to take. Make sure you got your foot pedal. Okay, make sure you have all your cords. Take extension cords and a power bar or two. And I would highly recommend investing in one of those power bars that's heavy duty. That's what we take. Because you're going to have your iron. You're going to have your sewing machine plugged in there. You may have other things as well. And, you know, you might be kicking out your the little fuse in your um, or little breaker in a cheap power bar uh with it if you have a heavier duty one it might be able to handle the load with that but definitely take extension cords plural and long ones okay I mean, a lot of these places supply a lot of the extension mm -hmm. cords but sometimes they run out yeah um and you want to have a long one because you don't know how far away from an outlet you possibly could be so we take lots of extension cords with us and I've also got something called a power tower, which you can get them on Amazon. They're really cool. They're small, but they have, uh, I think the one I bought has one, two, three, four, eight, three prong outlets. They stand up, they're about this high. And um, they also, the ones I bought also have four USB slots as well. So if you wanna charge your phone, if you're taking your iPad, or anything that needs a USB charger for it, one of those is really good. And they're not expensive. They're about 30 bucks to buy one. And the one I bought has two switches on it. So half of it can be on or off or all of it on. And it's also got a circuit breaker in this particular one. So if, you know, you overload it, uh, you can reset it. Uh, kind of thing easily enough. So I highly recommend it. I saw one of these at one of the retreats I was at and I thought that is a really good idea. And in fact, what some people were doing at that retreat, they would set the tables in groupings of four. So you sort of had the way they were laid out, you had sort of a central hub and this is where they set it up and everybody could plug their sewing machines into the central hub kind of a deal. So I'm not sharing mine, but I <laughs> Well, with Walter, maybe we'll see. Um, but uh, it, it's a good thing. It, so look them up on Amazon. Just look up uh, power bars or something. You'll see them. They're there. Um, so what's something you wouldn't expect if you've never been to one though before, which I laughed the first time I heard it and we now do it. Taking your own chair. Yeah. If you've got room and can get it in, taking the sewing chair, the chair you sit on when you usually sew, take it with you. Why? Because in halls, they usually have those hall chairs, you know, the ones that do not adjust, they don't swivel, and they're not all that comfortable. And you're going to be sitting for, well, in the case of us, three days for long hours at a time, you'll want a comfortable chair. So we take ours. Now, ours are small. Walter, well, we both have stools. I have a stool with a back on it now kind of thing but that's what i use as my principal sewing chair you don't you have your office chair but that's not going yeah, to fit no but what well, i have a stool right yeah you yeah. have a stool you have a stool i take the stool with yeah me. i mean worst comes to worst if i don't like the stool i can always grab one of those chairs well, yeah from the well you hall. used the stool the last time yeah right? i did yeah yeah too so and sometimes if you want to take a cushion for your back or something like that that's possibly mm -hmm. a good idea basically what i'm saying is whatever you use to sit on at home when you're doing your sewing if it's possible to transport that or at least something that is more comfortable for you when you go to a retreat it is a good idea to take it i laughed plus if your chair is possibly like an adjustable height one yeah because the tables might be a different height well yeah than what yeah. you're used to as well so that's a that's a good point too um because usually they're just standard folding tables that most of these halls have and that may not be the height you're used to having your machine at and you know you can get sore pretty fast if things are not exactly placed comfortably for you 
which means also make sure that you ex that you do get up and move around go and see what other people are doing <laughs> bring some, some snacks too if you yeah want. i was just yeah. going to say, like yeah so we haven't discussed our snacks what are we what are we going to take for snacks yeah, i don't know i don't usually eat that much drink i don't either so. but i like munchies well i was thinking that you know maybe some something salty like bags of potato chips yeah but i was thinking pringles because they're more convenient oh, in a yeah, can okay, than the bag and maybe some m ms because you like a little chocolate and there was something else some nuts maybe that and then now in the rooms that we stay in we have a a kitchen in those rooms uh at this particular resort which has a coffee maker in it um and a full-size fridge and that so i think we should take some crackers and cheese yeah, we should also bring some, um, like, I like to drink soda yeah. water or some uh, 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 soda type. Yeah, some regular products. water and some sparkling water. Yeah. Uh, we have, um, I have that on my list Yeah. as well. Yep. So, yeah, you want to take all the comfort creatures. And if you're someone who's worried about wrecking your diet, give it up for those that time you're at the retreat. Because they ha often have a snack table people bring and put on the table now they weren't going to have one at this retreat due to the covid kind of things and that but now there's been certain restrictions uh lifted so they are going to have a snack table but they're telling everybody only put things on the snack table which is a common table people can take what they want from it. everybody bring stuff make sure everything is individually wrapped kind of a deal i think we're just going to take our own crap and uh mm -hmm. do that um coffee take a coffee mug with you um uh, many of these will provide coffee free of charge but they may not have coffee cups so you may want to take your own coffee cup and also you know if, if you're going to be there for that many uh, for a, a several days it's nicer to have, drink your coffee out of a mug than out of a styrofoam thing or a paper cup kind of a deal and you know it's good for the environment to recycle reuse um what other things? Okay, some people take hand lotion with them. Um, I don't. Well, that's not really true. I do have a little bottle of it. You, your hands will get a little raw because you're sewing a, a lot. And so I know with ladies, they like to keep their hands soft and subtle uh, with it. But it doesn't hurt. Um, oh, make sure you take your pressing sprays. I just thought of fluids here. We're talking about water. We're talking about yeah, and in the place we're staying in, that's kind of rustic, so we have to bring our own soap and, and uh, oh yeah, yeah, shampoo and stuff. Yeah, they don't supply uh, you know soap and uh, shampoo and things. We have to bring our own uh, with all of that. But again, it depends on where your retreat is going to be at. But yeah. this one, so we have to take all that. So what are we up to here? We've got two sewing machines. We're only taking two. We're not taking our embroidery machines this time. I have, uh, I'm not sure yet, but I might take my surgery. Your surgery? I don't, the one thing that I'm sewing doesn't really require a surgery. Sometimes I use that, um, but uh, I can probably do without it. But you know, it's one of those things that I'll probably get up there and I think, darn, I should yeah. drop that. Well, they're small anyway. So yeah, I know. It's not so. like it's going to take up a lot of space. So yeah, it's probably a good idea. Um, now, you see, that's different about this one is that Walter will not be doing quilting. He'll be, what are you going to be doing? I'm going to cut up. I'm, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to cut up fabric for uh, some short sleeve shirts. Mm. And I'm going to be making mm, short summer shirts. wardrobe. So, yeah. Yeah. So I think you should take your surgery. Uh, with I it. don't. Uh, sometimes I do the seams in the short sleeve shirts, shirts on the serger, but I can do it. Uh, the original pattern says that you're supposed to use do flat felt seams which mm -hmm. i don't have to use a serger for but i don't really like doing them that much so uh i might i might uh i might part way through the weekend say forget it <laughs> do the <surger. laughs> so okay so we'll have three machines we'll have two irons two extra tables two chair stools whatever you want to call it We'll have probably two cutting mats. Uh, and you might say, well, why are you two of you going together? Why don't you share the cutting mat? Yeah, now, but we would want to sometimes, um, uh, we'd end up have, both wanting to use it at the same, same time. time. So it's, yeah. it's uh, a nuisance if you have to wait for somebody. Yeah, because we don't wait. 
Well, not only that, there may be a lot of cutting that you want to do uh, at one particular time. Yeah. And then, uh, um, and then I, I may not want, I don't usually, the stuff I'm bringing up, I, I don't, shouldn't have to cut too much, but I, uh, there's always stuff that you need to. We'll need trim. pressing mats. We'll probably take our wool mats as well. Um, so cutting boards, rotary cutters. Oh, th there's all the tools. Yeah, all the tools. I'll have to bring, uh, if I decide to do shirts, I'm going to bring buttons and stuff like that. So. so, and then there's, yeah, then there's your supplies, as in your fabric, your buttons, your thread. Um, and this is where I say, for me, I make a list of all this stuff because you get up there and you forgot your thread. Well, what are you going to do? Unravel a shirt? Well, they will have a little store there as well they always do where you can probably buy some some of those things as well but nevertheless you know you want to have your own stuff why spend extra money if you can avoid it because besides if they have fabric up there like in bundles or stuff i'm sure i would want to shop because i always want to shop when i'm at a retreat mm -hmm. but everybody does all the rulers you need i've listed all of those in my list as well and uh just to give you an idea, I can show you my list and how I organize this. And let's just get this view out of the way. So let me switch the screen over. Okay, here's my list. First of all, kits. This is how I keep track of all the stuff I need to take. I have three projects I want to work on. Actually, I'm working, I'm debating whether I'm going to sub out one of those for a different one that I started today uh, with it as well. But these are all in plastic containers that are all labeled. They have the patterns, they have the fabric, and I have pre-cut my fabric according to the pa pattern instructions. So I don't have to fool around cutting. And the other reason, too, I don't want to cut or avoid as much cutting as I can when I'm at the retreat is because that's when I make mistakes. There's too many things going on at once. And, you know, it's really easy to cut stuff wrong. Um, and I take extra fabric for all these kits as well, just in case I do make a mistake. So, so they're all in nice little neat kits. And you're going to say, well, what, are you intending to make three quilts over three days? No, but I might get bored with one of the projects. Um, and I might want to start another or one's one. not working the or way one's not working. Yeah, you know, you get a project like that, you know, you just get it's just not working today. Put it aside, go to something else. Now, you'll notice I have a long list of rulers. Why so many rulers? Well, because they're I know which ones I definitely need for sure that go with these patterns, but I'm taking other ones because there may be circumstances where I will need them thing about rulers are they're flat all of these rulers pretty much except for the 20 even that one i think will fit they'll fit in my sewing bag that has my sewing machine in it as well um so that's not really going to take up a lot of space will make my bag very heavy the same with my cutting mat it folds up now here's the other tools rotary mat rotating mat two sizes i have a large one a small one they fit in the bag why am I taking two? Why couldn't I just use one, like the large one? Because the small one is very is easier to manipulate when you're doing something that's a smaller piece. And it doesn't take up that much room. Um, a Janome sewing mat. Well, this is something that's going underneath my sewing machine. It cushions the sewing machine, and I have it. And again, it's flat. Wool mat, rotary cutter, replacement, replacement rotary cutter blades are important uh, because those may not be readily avail available in their store. So, you know, now you can usually beg, borrow, and steal from other people that are there. And usually people are very willing to lend things to you or whatever if you forget something. But nevertheless, never a borrower, borrower or lender be. Um, the iron tool stand. What I, The tool stand that I'm talking about is... Um, what is a tool? Why did I put tool stand? What's that? You might I must um, have I must have been thinking, oh it's now I'm gonna use my tool kit bag so that yeah. one I can take off. Um scissors, yes, several scissors in different sizes, the threads, 
bobbins i use pre-wound i'll take a box of pre-wound bobbins with me um clips lots of clips i use wonder clips all the time and i've got two sizes pins of course ziploc bags are very good to have with you uh for holding your scraps or when you're putting pieces together you can label the bag you know you have so many half square triangles for this quilt is that it's good to have uh my pressing solutions um empty bobbins screwdriver for your sewing machine and then my sewing machine and i this is my travel one skyline s7 it's smaller than my m7 so that gives me more room in my sewing bag for other things the power cord the foot pedal because i have i don't think there's been one retreat i've ever been on where somebody hasn't forgotten either the power cord or the foot pedal and then you're kind of screwed um and my little box of feet and accessories and safety pins why not that's more or less a costume thing just in case we have a costume emergency safety pins are good to have then i you notice i classify all these i'm a little anally retentive uh the tables are costumes clothes <laughs> gotta take clothes uh game these are more things for the entertainment my journal um shoes because we where we are going is a little further north than us and although we don't have any snow right now down here there could be snow there or it could be very it's spring it if things are thawing it could be very muddy so they have a vestibule area where you can hang up your coat and that that's where we may want to put our boots and stuff so i don't want to be tramping around in my boots in the hall so i'll take a pair of shoes or slippers with me probably shoes um i don't like wearing slippers when I don't like wearing slippers at home, <laughs> let alone slippers out someplace. Um, the prizes, trophies, scrap bags, Sharpie, ticket bags. These are all mostly a lot of these things are for us because of the um, entertainment. Documents, wet ones and paper towels. You might want to take that with you. You know, if you're snacking away, sticky or a box of Kleenex or something too. Now, what other things here? Here's something we didn't mention. Desk light. We both have collapsible uh, out lights, uh, out lights, however you say it, mm. OTT lights. Um, they fold hot. right up, hot, hot lights, you know, but good to have because a lot of these halls, they, their lighting is up in the ceiling and it may be like a 15 foot ceiling or something. So even if your sewing machine has a light on it or is well lit, you probably want some additional lighting to be able to see things close. So that's why we always take those. Lori mentioned extension codes, cords, then all the stuff that I need for my electronic devices. Okay. These are things that the average person may not be taking. Uh, oops. Wine. We won't talk too much about that. Uh, <laughs> snacks. So I got my list, coffee mug, plastic glasses, uh, and just other things, plastic things. So that's my list of the things that I want to make sure I have. Take everything but the kitchen sink. And Walter will be taking as much of this too. So yeah. how do we all get this? Well, he has a CRV. Honda CRV. Yeah. Honda CRV. It the will be full. The seats fold down. It'll be pretty full. It'll be full. But we've done it before. And in fact, we had more equipment. We had more equipment uh, that yeah. times too. A lot of this stuff will fit into my actual sewing bag. I mean, I'll need two midgets to lift it off the back of the car and take it in, but it, it will fit there. And the other things I can get in several bags, but it's still going to be pretty packed. Um, so, yeah, it's exciting, but it does take time to plan and to get everything together uh, for all of this. So anyways, that's what we're doing. We're taking everything but the kitchen sink. And if we could get the kitchen sink in, we'd probably take that too. So, anything off our list that you can think of that we should be taking? Hmm. No, I can't think of anything right this second. Underwear? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, That's you know. optional, right? Oh, is that optional? It's that kind of thing, is it? Oh, yeah, whatever. Okay, so that just gives you an idea of what we'll be doing next week as we get everything together. And when I say next week, I'll be doing that next week. Walter will be doing it the night before yeah. and possibly the day of. Um, we can't check in. At, well, we 
anytime after one o'clock we're usually up there right about one o'clock um as well as unless one of your products that you ordered is coming getting delivered that day well i'm hoping it doesn't it's not supposed to be uh so we'll see um yeah okay so just thought you might be interested to know what we've got planned up there you may have turned us off by now so it's just some other announcements coming up craft and chat next week when everything goes up there will be the zoom link for craft and chat because it happens after the retreat weekend april the 6th is the first wednesday of april at one o'clock p.m so that will be craft and chat i will be sending out uh advance notice to the people on my mailing list but for everybody else all are welcome the listing for the zoom link and the time and all that will be listed in the show notes um it's actually starting today with this so chatty it'll be there but it'll also be in stephen and walter live on sunday It'll be on my vlog on Monday and it'll be on the Idiot Quilter episode on Tuesday. So it'll be in all of those. And uh, yeah, hope to see you then. Uh, and something new, I got some merch. Now, when I say merch, I mean Idiot Quilter merch. And here it is. This is not available for any of you. For a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I don't have any way of putting it up for sale. And two, I don't want to have to deal with shipping because I have no idea how much shipping would cost. And so I made this for myself. There's a company called Vistaprint. They're, they specialize in this kind of stuff. They'll take any logo, anything you create and put it on anything. So I got some coffee mugs. I bought four of these coffee mugs. Um, I bought 10 pens. Pens. And I bought two tote bags with the Idiot Quilter uh, logo, my logo on it, uh, just for fun. And uh, I gave Walter a mug. And don't forget to pack that with you. You're taking that to the retreat. And I gave him a tote bag and I gave him some pens or a pen. And uh, I just thought it was kind of fun. And they were having a sale. It was 40% off because... It's one of those companies where if you buy in bulk, you get it cheaper. But coffee mugs, if you buy them singularly, they're like $19 a piece. Um, that was 40% off on everything I got there. So it was still over 100 bucks for what you see there. Well, you're only seeing one mug. I bought four. Um, but it's just something I wanted to do. So, yeah, maybe down the road someday I'll seriously consider having merch. I don't know. Don't know if anybody would want any <laughs> or not. Okay. And, and I already mentioned that there's not going to be a so uh, chatty uh, next Friday because we'll be at the retreat. Um, And those of you that watch Stephen and Walter live on a regular basis, there may or may not be one uh, a week from this Sunday, but we'll talk about that this Sunday on so chatty or on uh, Stephen and Walter live too. So that's it. Hope didn't bore you to death. If we did, it's your fault because nobody sent me any topics. <laughs> so just my way of getting back at you. I want topics. We want topics. Uh, of course, we will give you a full report on the uh, next so chatty um, about the retreat and how things went as well with that. And I'm sure and we'll have some pictures probably to show you as well. Maybe even some little video clips as well, because uh, I do intend to take some video when I'm there as well with the permission of the ladies and if they won't give me my the permission I'll just take it anyways no <laughs> no that's not true I won't but uh yeah I don't think that'll be a problem okay all right that's it for today thanks for joining us and we'll see you again real soon say goodbye Walter goodbye Walter